Thank you. Hello, Craig Cipriano, President of MTA Bus Company. I'm joined here by Commissioner Polly Trottenberg, Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., State Senator Luis Sepulveda, City Council Transportation Chair Yadonis Rodriguez, City Council Member Rafael Salamanca, Lyft Community Engagement and Equity Program Manager France Francois, Riders Alliance Member Cecil Brooks, and Executive Director of Transportation Alternatives, Danny Harris. And we're all really excited to be here for the opening, uh, the official launch of the 149th Street bus, uh, bus lane. So we all know that the key to effective bus service is well-enforced bus priority. We saw that in our flagship busway on 14th Street, where travel times improved by 36%, and average weekday ridership increased by 24%. But that's not our only example. Right here in the Bronx, we implemented the BX6 SBS. And since then, travel times were down as much as 14% and ridership has increased. In Brooklyn, the B25, B26 Fulton Street bus lane has shown travel time improvements as much as 21%. And the B82 SBS, where we see travel time improvements up to 17% and ridership increases. And I am confident, I am telling our customers here in the Bronx that I am confident we will see the same improvements right here on 149th Street. Pre-pandemic, buses along this corridor right here tended to be one of the, some of the slowest in the city. With bus speeds anywhere between 3.9 and 4.3 miles per hour due to the heavy congestion and double parking on these corridors. More than 55,000 bus customers rely on four routes to traverse these lanes each and every day. They, they provide uh, connections to Manhattan uh, through many different subway, line, subway lines. And to further improve their experience, we've also implemented traffic signal priority on the BX-19. But of course, the presence of a bus lane alone does not guarantee same results. So I'm anxious and looking and to, look, to work closely with our partners at New York City DOT and the NYPD to ensure that our lanes are clear and well enforced. And we know as traffic comes back, a car-led recovery will only lead to gridlock. So I'm here to say to our customers, we are working hard to improve your bus experience. And to the motorists out there, I have a message for you. Follow the, rule, follow the rules, bus lanes are for buses, so stay out of the, thank you. And with that said, I'd like to introduce DOT Commissioner Polly Trottenberg. Thank you, Craig. And I can assure you the orange is for the original Dutch from New York City. The borough president wanted me to make sure I wasn't making a statement about the Mets. Um, I'm not signaling baseball allegiances today. Um, good morning, everyone. It's a gorgeous day to be out here. And thank you, Craig. I, I first of all want to say that everything we're going to talk about today uh, on behalf of the mayor has been an extraordinary partnership of DOT and the MTA, elected officials, advocates, and really particularly within my own agency, an incredible amount of work done by a bunch of units that I'm gonna call out, as well as our partners at Lyft. Um, a lot of great things to talk about today. And obviously, as Craig mentioned, 149th Street is now the fourth bus priority project we've completed since June. We're up to 9.1 miles. Um, we are going to be surpassing what we did last year, which was 10.7 miles. And we're doing that even in a year which obviously city government has been hit by coronavirus. We had a lot of you know folks kind of uh, on ice for a couple months. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to the bus team for their incredible work, led by Janet Jenkins over here. I think as Craig mentioned, this is an incredible bus corridor, 55,000 customers. This is a bus lane of nearly three miles with offset bus lanes, traffic signal priority, and the enforcement cameras, which Craig has been a big fan of, and we have as well. It obviously connects a lot of important destinations, Lincoln Hospital, Hostos Community College, the hub, is really the heart of the South Bronx. And I, I want to brag for a minute about the TSP innovations, um, and particularly want to give a shout out, where is he? Oh, Josh Benson, who, who runs our traffic operations. Uh, division and all his team members. TSP is a traffic engineering technique we use to get the buses to speed up. It either holds green lights so the buses can go through or shortens the time so a bus can jump up and, and move quickly. Along the 149th Street corridor, 
We now have TSP at 21 different intersections. And I'm proud to say we pledged this year that we were going to install TSP at 300 intersections. And we have broken our record. We're up to 460 intersections on 14 quarters across all five boroughs. So again, thanks to the traffic operations team. Uh, it, 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 it's very technical, but let me tell you, it, it's an extraordinary accomplishment. Bus, cam bus lane cameras, another tool we use. And this event, as Craig mentioned, serves as our official announcement that we're turning on DOT. We'll be turning on our stationary bus lane cameras along 149th Street. Drivers will be, get, as per mandated by state law, for the next 60 days, drivers will be getting warnings. And then if they're not out of those bus lanes, they're going to start to get fined. So I'm going to echo Craig's message. Drivers, stay out of the bus lanes. <laughs> Now, we're, we're celebrating this incredible world-class bus project, but, but from the DOT side, we want to celebrate something else, too, today, which is the boom of City Bike up here in the Bronx. And we have some incredible champions, some elected officials, particularly the borough president, uh, who have tasked us, the, the, the Blasio administration, we came in the road, we got to get City Bike up to the Bronx. So we are up to our phase three expansion. We started up here about a year ago. It seems like a very long time ago. We now have 110 stations in the Bronx, stretching from Mott Haven on up to East 49th and then all the way up to the Cross Bronx. Riding to and from these stations in the Bronx just since May, we have nearly 100,000 city bike rides. So it has been an incredible success. And thank you, where's France? Thank you to, thank you to City Bike at that. So let me just take a minute here again to thank some of the members of the DOT team. First of all, our Bronx Borough Commissioner's Office. We have, where are they? Navarro Lopez and Keith Cal, who run, who run points on a lot of these incredible projects. Um, I'd like to, again, shout out our traffic operations team and the incredible work they've done speeding up the installation of TSP, Josh Benson, John Topaldo, Vinny Sushi, and then Andrew Lesko, who, a brilliant traffic engineer who not only figured out how to speed up TSP, he's award-winning now for the incredible work he's done. Uh, our bike teams, too, have been hard at work this summer. I got to ride this morning over from Manhattan on the Willis Avenue Bridge. I want to thank Deputy Commissioner Eric Beaton, as well as a lot of folks on his team, Janet Jenkins, Ryan Sarafeller, and Kyle Gebhardt. And a special shout out to Omar Arias. Where's Omar, who did us on our bike ride today? Where are you, Omar? Thank you. And then finally, bike share. John Frost, Lisa Morosco, Mabel Kessler, Sam Hope, Lily Gordon Coven, and Jesse Cabrera. It, it really has taken a, a village to bring what we think are some incredible transportation improvements to make this part of the Bronx a transportation hub, safe, world-class transportation. So thank you so much, Greg. Glad to be here. Thank you, Polly. Now I'd like to introduce Borough President Ruben Diaz, Jr. Good morning, buenos dias. Uh, para la prensa de español, le quiero decir un, unas palabritas. Eh, le queremos dar las gracias a la comisionada, eh, al equipo de ella del Departamento de Transportación, Le damos las gracias a todos los oficiales electos como Idanis Rodríguez, que es el, el presidente del Comité de Transportación, al senador Sepúlveda, al concejal eh, Rafael Salamanca, a todos los del de, MTA, al equipo de uh, Transportation Alternatives, a todos los del de, equipo de los autobuses. El anuncio de hoy es sumamente importante, porque aquí en la tercera avenida, cuando se habla de los autobuses y el tráfico, Es importante que el estudiante de Hostos Community College pueda llegar a sus cursos. Sabemos que la pandemia no nos no, no permite hoy en día, pero cuando ya en el futuro necesitan llegar a sus cursos a tiempo, la familia, una familia que, ten, que tenga una persona lamentablemente en el hospital de, 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 de Lincoln, quieren llegar a tiempo y ya tienen ansiedad porque su querido está herido o está enfermo en el hospital, no necesita más ansiedad estando estoqueado en el tráfico. A, a los negociantes de la tercera avenida, sabemos que no hay mucho parqueo. So, cuando se está hablando de aquellas personas que ellos necesitan para que puedan comprar en su tienda, tener un autobús así de expreso, asiste con la economía local. Y por eso que le damos las gracias por este gran anuncio. Por eso que le damos las gracias por enfocarse y darle prioridad 
a nuestro condado que lamentablemente en el pasado siempre como que nos sentimos que no nos prestan tanto at atención. I just wanted to say that we wanted to thank you because the student, the, the, the reason why this is important is because even though we're in a pandemic now, the student that's in Ostos Community College needs to get to course on time. The families who already have anxieties because their loved one is sick in Lincoln Hospital don't need added anxiety if they're just stuck in traffic. The b businesses, which we know are struggling, and in the hub, there's not too much parking. So we, they need customers to feel like they can take the bus, get here in adequate time, buy what they want to buy, get back on the bus and go home. This is important for our local economy. And so for that, I want to thank you, your whole team, Commissioner, the MTA team, Transportation Alternatives, all my colleagues in government for coming together and prioritizing uh, the our borough because quite frankly, you know that in the past we feel like we've been overlooked. And so you've continued to be committed to the borough of the Bronx. Let me just talk about City Bike, for instance, because that's one of the areas where I screamed and I hollered. And I know that numbers are up with uh, injuries and fatalities of cyclists. To all of the motorists and the cyclists, I want to say today in the city of New York, it is a new world. To you motorists, and I'm one of them, understand that the road is not only yours. To those individuals who want to now enjoy a, 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 a bicycling ride, who want to make sure that you protect the environment while you do so, get a little bit of exercise. By the way, we start our virtual tour of the Bronx. Go on ilovethebronx.com. We're doing it for the whole uh, summer. I'm going to start tomorrow. There are three different courses, shameless plug. Uh, but for you cyclists as well, we're working on cycling infrastructure. We need protected lanes. We need to protect you more, but you also have to help us by protecting yourselves. There are so many of you who still don't wear your helmets. There's still so many who are going up and down one-way streets that you're not supposed to. So we also want you to be mindful and be educated and adhere uh, to traffic rules. And then lastly, this is a beautiful day today. Please, Lord, hear my prayers. Let the Yankees win tonight. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Borough President. Now I'd like to introduce State Senator Luis Sepulveda. Good morning, everyone. Muchas gracias. I'm going to continue his trend. Vamos a comenzar en español. Para mí es un honor y un placer estar aquí celebrando con el MTA, esta agencia, y con City Bike, que quieren mejorar el sistema de tránsito aquí en el condado de Bronx. Y es importante que nuestras comunidades, que han sufrido tanto durante esta pandemia, Es importante que el sistema de tránsito sea estable y que las personas puedan llegar a sus, a sus citas. Que los ciertos de comercios aquí pueden tener personas llegar ahí sin el tránsito. Sabemos que en esta área hay muchos centros comerciales, hay hospitales. Y si ustedes pueden llegar a sus centros con menos frustración, con menos estrés, es importante para la salud mental de nuestros constituyentes y también es importante para nosotros poder llegar traer negocio, comercio a estos centros. Es bueno para la comunidad y es bueno para la economía. Con respecto a las bicicletas de City Bike, para mí, correr en bicicleta es uno de los amores de mi vida. Semanalmente yo corro de 75 a 100 millas y es importante tener las filas específicas, los carriles específicos para las bicicletas y le digo a las personas que no estacionen en esos carriles porque es muy peligroso para nosotros como las personas que estamos en las bicicletas. Así que le urjo que no se estacionen ahí, pero también le urjo que usen los carriles de bicicleta, que usen sus bicicletas porque no solamente es importante para su, su salud, yo específicamente he rebajado casi 40 libras durante la pandemia y es porque estoy usando bicicletas diariamente. So, para ustedes, usen las bicicletas, los carriles Eh, son eh, importante para su salud mental también y su salud físico. Uh, for those of you that are Spanish challenge, uh, I'll translate. Uh, to me, you know, this is this is one of my first loves. One of my big loves is is cycling, but I also take the bus on a regular basis. I I ride the uh, uh, mass transit system in the city in the Bronx almost on a weekly basis. Uh, so it's important that we decrease the wait time for our for our potential constituents and passengers. You know, we need to get people to work on time, and we need to get them there with the least amount of stress. 
with the least amount of issues. We need them to get into our commercial centers with the least amount of stress. It's good for business and it's good for the economy. Now, with respect to these lanes, City Bike, thank you so much. Thank the city for creating many bike lanes. I've ridden thousands of miles of bike lanes here in the city and in the state. And I can tell you that the city has done a wonderful job. You can go almost anywhere in this city on a bike. And I urge you all to do that. You see the beauty of the city. You see the diversity of the city. Over here in the bike, in, uh, on the bike lanes here in the Bronx, you see our beautiful commercial hubs. You see a lot of the beauty that we normally don't see because we're on vehicles. So take the chance, go out there, uh, use city bike or any bike that you have because it's good not only for your physical health, for your mental health, and maybe you, know, you can do something for your family and take them all together on a trip to one of our beautiful parks, one of our beautiful centers, but do it, take advantage, and do not park on bus lanes or park lanes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. I'd now like it to introduce City Council Transportation Chair, Yadanis Rodriguez. Primeramente quiero eh, pedirle a, a la persona que nosotros tenemos al frente de la Casa Blanca que le mande a la ciudad de Nueva York los fondos financieros que necesitamos y especialmente que le mande a la MTA los fondos que nosotros merecemos tener. I want to start asking that guy that we have running the White House to please look on how New York City works and look at, the, at us as a role model and to please send the money, the financial support that we need to the MTA. The city of New York contribute more money to DC than what we got from DC. But this is not time to play game. The MTA need all the financial support in order to continue all the projects that we have online. Yo creo que es un momento muy importante de nosotros reconocer el trabajo que se está haciendo. Primeramente el mensaje es que se acabe la desigualdad en la ciudad de Nueva York que no podemos seguir teniendo trato diferente en las comunidades pobres a lo que ocurre en las comunidades de los ricos. Que los servicios de bicicleta se deben de seguir expandiendo, que debemos seguir modernizando el servicio de autobuses y que también tenemos que asegurarnos de que los choferes entiendan de que en la ciudad de Nueva York, de 8.6 millones de personas que habemos, solamente 1.4 millón tiene carros. Más de 7 millones de neoyorquinos andan caminando, toman los autobuses, toman la bicicleta o toman los ferry. I think that today we must celebrate our achievement in bringing these much needed resources into the South Bronx. These new bus lanes, pedestrian island, loading zones, transit sign of priority, and bus lane cameras will all signify improve the efficiency and reliability to our buses for this community. I want to leave a meaningful legacy to this city, working together with great partners, such as a great national transportation leader, our city transportation commissioner, Polly Tromber, the borough president, Ruben Diaz, and the rest of my colleagues here. One of those is to reduce congestion in the city by pushing New Yorkers to embrace alternative modes of transportation we can make the city of New York a role model when it comes to become the most pedestrian and cycling friendly. Expanding our bus ways, improving our trains, ensuring we are making city bikes accessible to all community and socioeconomic backgrounds and reclaiming our streets by expanding pedestrian plazas is how we are going to make New York City one of the most pedestrian and cycling friendly cities in the whole world. We already have seen the direction that the city is taking under the leadership with our, our city transportation commissioner and Mayor de Blasio and all of us working together. I was also very happy to hear that over 100 city bike station has been installed in the South Bronx. This was not intended to happen when city bike was created. City Bike was created first thinking about downtown Manhattan, serving the upper class and the middle class. It is in the last couple of years that we've been expanding City Bike and making City Bike accessible also to working class. I'm proud to know that this station have arrived into many other areas, 
in northern Manhattan, the South Bronx, and we need to continue bringing, especially to the transportation desert area that we have in the city. Nosotros tenemos que seguir trabajando para que la, el sistema de bicicleta todavía sea más asequible, todavía siga expandiéndose a los lugares que tenemos de, transport, de desierto de transportación en comunidades pobres, mayormente negras, asiáticas y latinas. We must continue expanding this initiative and make them more accessible to low-income New Yorkers. I thank Liv for being a great partner during these difficult times. Our work continues. We need to make sure our roads are safe for all New Yorkers. A few days ago, a cyclist was struck and killed on Third Avenue in Brooklyn, which has a, histo a history of being a dangerous road. Clara Kane, a nurse, has been the 19th cyclist killed this year in the city. We must continue to work and engage with local communities to ensure we are placing all proper road protections to keep New Yorkers safe. By improving road like this one, we have finished today, we will prevent pedestrian and cyclist death. Sigamos todo trabajando, que se mejore la seguridad para los peatones, para los ciclistas, y que el sistema de city bike se sigue expandiendo a los lugares más pobres. Thank you. Thank you, Adonis. Now I'd like to introduce City Council Member Rafael Salamanca. Buenos días, good morning, good morning. For New Yorkers, we know that one of most, our most valuable things in life is time. Being able to get somewhere on time, being able to leave wherever you're at on time, and being able to cherish our time with our families and friends and with work. And for Bronxites who are from this area, you know that if you are traveling on 149th Street and 3rd Avenue via car or a bus, you will never get to your destination on time. We know that. Not to mention the congestion that is there, not to mention that after Times Square, 149th Street and 3rd Avenue uh, has the most foot traffic in the city of New York. So I really want to thank uh, Commissioner uh, Polly and Commissioner Navarro for really sitting down with the community when we put this plan together. Yeah, there was parking that was removed for either the bus lanes or the city bikes. Yeah. There may be an inconvenience for us drivers, right? Now we have one lane. Well, we just need to plan more accordingly because to be honest, there are more New Yorkers who utilize public transportations than there are New Yorkers that actually have cars to get to their destinations, especially here in the borough of the Bronx. But I also want to give a big thank you to, uh, to both commissioners because they did, and, and your team, and your team, they did not just come with a plan, said this is what we're gonna do. They came with a plan, they sat down, and they negotiated with us to ensure that this plan benefits the community and the borough of the Bronx. And for that, I say gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Lyft Community Engagement and Equity Program Manager, France Francois. Hi, everyone. Mm, nadie me dijo que podemos hablar en español, pero <laughs> bueno, la próxima vez, la próxima vez. Pero primero quiero gracias, dar gracias a todas las personas de el Bronx que están usando City Bike. Más que 100 mil personas hasta ahora están usando la bicicleta. Entonces quiero darle gracias a ustedes primero. My name is France Francois. I'm the Community Engagement and Equity Programs Manager for City Bike. First, I also want to thank the mayor's office, the Department of Transportation, led, led by Commissioner Trottenberg, Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz, Transportation Chair Idanis Rodriguez, Council Member Salamanca, Ayala, Cabrera, Gibson, and the State Senator Sepaldeveda for their leadership in making today's announcement possible. I also want to thank the amazing community partners that we have here in the Bronx who have also engaged in transportation issues from the onset and have continued to fight so hard to build streets that provide better transportation options for all Bronx sites. City Bike is thrilled to announce that we have been able to install our 1,000 City Bike station here in the Bronx. And we're pleased to report that in such a small amount of time, 100,000 trips on city bikes have originated from Bronx sites. 
That is a remarkable achievement, and it just shows to how already bicycling is part of this community, and it's part of the Bronx. And if you build it, they will come. We're looking forward to continuing working with the city and local partners as the system expands even further throughout the months. It has never been more important than now to provide a more affordable, equitable, and healthy transportation option for all, all those people living in the Bronx and elsewhere. Through our community grants process, we've invested $230,000 in communities like the Bronx, including funding local organizations like the Bronx, Bronx River Alliance, the Third Avenue Bid, and Bl Black Feminist Project right here. We have also know that small businesses are the backbone of the Bronx. And we've invested in small businesses by providing businesses like Bronx Native, as well as the Bronx Brewery and the Bronx Boogie Down Cafe with free city bike memberships to make sure that them and their staff can get to work safely at a time when they need to reopen and give back to the communities that they help build. City Bike has provided small businesses and their customers with options that have helped local economies grow by allowing more people to move around. One city bike station means at least 40 people are coming in and out of your business at any point in time. And that ensures that equitable access is guaranteed for everyone. Not to mention our reduced fare bike share program, which provides people on SNAP and NYCHA with, with city bike memberships for $5 a month. Our commitment to Bronx is strong and it's ongoing. And these bike lanes are only the beginning. We hope to continue expanding in the Bronx and working closely with our partners here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, a couple words from a couple members of our advocacy community. I'd like to introduce Riders Alliance member Cecil Brooks. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Now, can we take a second to remember that we're in the Bronx and throw up an X? Levanta la X. I always like to remind people because not only am I very gung ho about the Bronx, but I am um, a, a homegrown product. I grew up two blocks from here, right on 147th Street. And many familiar faces here. Idanis Rodriguez, one of the first elected officials who was hand I shook. Um, the borough president who came to my middle school. Riders Alliance, Transportation Alternatives, taught me how to ride a bike. You know, so no, I'm dating myself too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so I, I, it really means a lot to me and many uh, members of the community, especially the young folks, the younger folks and the new residents who are going to be here for years to come. And I, I want people to remember that this system of transportation is something that has been the product of many demands, many community demands for years. Many leaders, elected officials, community advocacy groups, people who saw a need on the actual ground, the land and the layout of this neighborhood. So this is something that cannot stop and it cannot be the last milestone. I also have, have um, a special uh, personal tie to this route because I used to ride the, the 19 bus, the Bronx 19 and 17, every, every weekend when my, my grandmother would, would um, watch me. And I, I also had to go to just about every community center or after school program after school along Southern Boulevard or around 149th Street. And for me and many other people, this was one of the only options for how to get around in our neighborhoods. And um, also, as, as a member of the Central American community, Los Hondureños Centroamericanos, no, no tenemos opciones para... No, no tenemos opciones para, para conocer nuestra vecindad. Y el sistema de transporte es algo, una cosa más, porque uh, estamos en el Bronx, el sur de, del Bronx. Y tenemos los trabajos más esenciales, más importantes, pero uh, tu, por los ojos de, de las inversiones públicas, tenemos eh, el valor más bajo. Y tenemos que cambiar, na, no solamente cómo, cómo reconocer eh, eh, las necesidades acá en este, en este área, pero también qué podemos hacer en, en el año que viene, en, en, uh, en la próxima década. Y entonces, en, en, en el centro de Nueva York, en el sur de Bronx, somos el corazón de Nueva York, el, el, el corazón de la ciudad y tenemos eh, como, como un, una mayoría de las líneas de tren, del metro, uh, la, las bus, los buses que todavía necesitan fondos y es una cosa que todavía persiste y sigue. Entonces yo quiero que todo el mundo aquí 
hagan una, eh, una batalla, no, no solamente una, eh, una conversación, pero algo que todavía falta progreso y todavía falta más caras, más voces acá, uh, caras y voz, voces, rostros como uh, lo de mío, y, y todavía la de la primera generación acá, porque no, no es una cosa que se termina en este año. Um, this isn't something that will finish in 2020. This isn't something that the coronavirus pandemic um, will, will allow to continue um, just, just, if, um, just because we're, we're um, letting it happen in a conversation. We also need people to stay on top of the community, on top of our leaders, on top of our um, priorities, because the Bronx will continue to be here and the South Bronx will continue to have its history of needs and disinvestment and so as someone who will continue to live here who walked about 20 minutes um, from my apartment here I I plead with people I plead with all of the same people who brought me into public service to continue to make this a priority thank you gracias que Dios le bendiga y, um, please reach out if you would like to work with transportation alternatives thank you Cecil uh, last on our agenda this morning, but certainly not least, uh, Danny Harris, Executive Director, Transportation Alternatives. Good morning, everybody. My name is Danny Harris. I'm honored to be the Executive Director of Transportation Alternatives. True to our name, we are quite simply about giving New Yorkers more options so that when you walk out of your house, you have a number of ways to get around. Yes, if you are a driver, don't park in the bike lane, but let me give you one more. If you walk out of your house and there are no other options, if you are spending up to $9,000 a year on car-related payments and you have no other way to get, get around, if your children are struggling with asthma, if your older parents or maybe you yourself don't feel safe to cross the street, if your children don't feel safe to cross the street, you should be standing with us. And I want to thank especially the commissioner for your incredible leadership and in in yours and the team and, and President Feinberg and all the incredible elected officials who are standing here, who are walking the walk, not just talking the talk. Unfortunately, I've had to spend my days, especially recently, traveling from vigil to vigil, as more New Yorkers, unfortunately, are dying on our streets. This is where we need to be. Groundbreaking after groundbreaking after groundbreaking helping to fight back against this wave of Carmageddon that could take over our city. We need to think of our streets as a pathway to recovery. Let this be a moment after another moment where we gather together to fight for our transit in Washington, D.C., to gather in the Bronx and fight for this and more bike lanes, and to create a space true to the commitment of the city where we achieve Vision Zero, not just where every New Yorker can cross the street without fear of death or injury, but where the asthma triangle of the Bronx no longer exists, where commute time, as you mentioned, is no longer the single largest indicator for elevating people out of generational poverty. We are not talking about buses and bikes. We're talking about opportunity and health. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we'll take questions. Alternatives for transportation. I wanted to know if they're going to be more um, job opportunities, being that there's expanding the transportation for minorities. That was my question. I don't know who wants. To. I don't know if anyone else wants to take that. One thing I would say, and I think it was brought up by um, one of the speakers here today, is one of the key pieces to employment opportunities is access to transportation, right? Good transportation, and that's what I think this event is all about: trying to improve local bus service, provide options with Citibank. Uh, city bike, I'm sorry, city bike, and uh, so things just flow from there. But you know, from my perspective, what I'm here to do is provide you and my customers the best bus service we can, along with my partners at uh, DOT. France. Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, City Bike will be aggressively hiring in the upcoming months, coming weeks, actually. As we expand, we're hiring bike swappers and a bunch of other roles. You can come to me or go to motivate.com to see what positions are available. There are job fairs every week as we continue to hire. You're taking away a, a, a lane regularly. 
Um, what are you going to do about the delivery drivers stopping in the uh, stopping in the bus lane, stopping in the regular lane, and causing even more traffic? It's not just here, but throughout. Sure. So I'll start, and I'll probably want to jump in, but. You know, one of the, one of the uh, as I said in my uh, the opening remarks, is that, you know, the key to effective bus service is working closely with my partner at City DOT, uh, Polly and her team, as well as NYPD. So we continue to work, work with NYPD on enforcement. Also, we have a number of uh, ways in which we do automated enforcement. Polly mentioned that she has fixed post cameras that are being deployed here on uh, the 149th Street bus lane. We currently have $85 million programmed in the 2020-24 MTA Capital Plan, specifically for onboard bus lane enforcement cameras. But those type of programs are only as good as the uh, current you know, fiscal um, uh, calamity that we're in, right? That's why we really need the federal government to step up to provide funding for the MTA so that programs such as the Automated Bus Lane Enforcement Program and others can continue to move ahead. Henry Hudson Parkway right after the exit for 95th Street. There's a major dip in the roadway likely caused by construction. We've kind of watched all night cars flying over it. We even witnessed an accident today. I understand you're not aware of this. I was told you haven't made, been made aware of this. But, well, but I, yeah, I have now and we it was a, an error by our contractor and we have them out fixing it. So what's the DOT procedure for holding a subcontractor accountable like in this case? Well, first of all, I want them to fix it. Then we'll obviously take a look at what went wrong and, and you know, there, there may be something we do to the contractor, but right now we just want to get it fixed and make sure it's safe. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. You have something else? Yeah. All right, one last question, please. Can you speak about the incident in Staten Island with the driver that asked the passenger to put the mask and coffee was thrown to the driver? I'm sorry, can you say that again? In Staten Island, oh. the coffee, the coffee yeah, so, incident. So as I said, I mean, any assault on our, uh, you know, essential workers, really our heroes that have, provide, that have been providing essential bus service throughout the pandemic is really abhorrent and, and disgusting and it's not tolerated. You know, we're working very closely with uh, partners at NYPD. We have our own uh, MTA police, bridge and tunnel officers, and Eagle team patrolling our buses. Uh, what I would say is that our bus operators are really heroes. And again, any assault against them uh, won't, will not be tolerated and will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Thanks, everybody. Mass? Sure. So as, as you know, mass on board buses is a, a state, you know, is a state mandate, the state law. Uh, you know, we go out and we enforce with our uh, bridge and tunnel offices, Eagle teams and the like. What I'm proud to say is that our customers are wearing masks. Our uh, latest uh, survey show that 97% of bus customers are wearing masks. And we're also making it uh, possible for those who don't have masks to get masks on board our buses. We currently have over 600 buses with mask dispensers and we are uh, handing them out as we see need. So thank you.